Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 6.2, Inverse Functions and Relations. We're going to get things started off today with the vocab word, inverse relation. An inverse relation is whenever one relation contains the element AB and the other relation contains the element BA. So what happened with A and B and BA? All they did was flip, spo flip spots, right? The A went to the Y and the B went to the X. So I think you'll like number one when we're asked to find the inverse of the relation. Well, what happens? Two will flip with nine. So in set notation, we have coordinate now for our inverse is nine, two for one coordinate point. Then we flip here as well. So it's going to be four for our x, negative three for our y. And then the same thing with the 5 and the negative 6. The negative 6 comes over here. So it's negative 6 and 5 for our last coordinate point. And this is the inverse of the relation. Now with number 2, when we're asked to find the inverse of each function, then graph the function. Now how do we set these up? What we want to start with is changing it to x's and y. So I'm going to change my f of x to y because that's what it represents. y equals 2x minus 4. And now let's go ahead and draw this line 2x minus 4 and I already have it down here for us. It's the blue line and now what we have to do to find the inverse of the function is to actually flip our x's and y's just like the definition of inverse relation. So I'm going to make my y an x and I'm going to make my x a y. Once you do that you set it up now we're going to solve for y. That's what we have to do with inverse relations. Solve for y. So how do you solve for y? Add the 4 over so it's going to be x plus 4 equals 2y. Now how do we solve for y? We divide both sides by 2. Both sides by 2 so now we have x over 2 plus, also have to divide that 4 by 2, plus 2 equals y. I'm going to write this in a form that we know what it looks like. This x divided by 2 is the same thing as 1 half x plus 2 equals y, where our slope is 1 half and our y-intercept is plus 2. So now let's go ahead and graph this line. So we go up 2, put a point for a y-intercept. Then we go up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, or we could go down 1 from our y-intercept, down 1 over 2, and then we can go ahead and connect those dots like so. And there is our inverse function of the line. And also I want to point out, notice how it reflects over the line y equals x. It reflects over the line y equals x. That's the equation of this red dotted line. Let's try one more. Find the inverse of this function. Well, what's our first step? We have to replace our f of x with a y. I'm going to do that in black ink. So it's y equals x squared plus 1. What's our next step? That we have to flip our x's and y's. So let's go ahead and flip it. We have x equals y squared plus 1. Now we want to get the y squared by itself, so we subtract over the 1. So x minus 1 equals y squared. How do we undo a square? We have to square root both sides. So then we have the square root of x minus 1 equals y. And what is a square root? A square root is going to be positive and negative. Now what if we were asked to graph this guy? Well, what we want to do is make the inside 0, so I'm going to pick 1. We're just basically going to make a table. I'm going to pick 1, plug it in for x. 1 gives me 0 for my y, so I'm going to put it here. And then I also know if I put in 1, I'm going to get, or if I put in 2, I'm going to get 1. The square root of 1 is here. So I'm going to get a top of the graph that looks something like this, right? Well, now it's positive and it's also negative. So if we just reflect it we have something that looks like this. Now what if I graph the function that we were given to us? So something that looks like uh, what we did last chapter. Remember we just basically went up one and then if we would put one in it would look something like this. 
Well, it looks a lot like our inverse function. Do you agree? I hope so. Let's move on to a couple more. We're just finding the inverse of each function. So with number four, first thing that we want to do, we want to replace the f of x with the y and then just rewrite the whole function. Now we want to switch our x's and y's. So x equals a negative one half y plus one. We want to get the 1 to the other side. We want to get what's multiplied to the y by itself. So it's going to be x minus 1 equals negative 1 half y. Now how do we get, how do we undo what's being done to y? We have to divide by a negative 1 half. Divide by a negative 1 half. We're doing that to this whole x minus 1. So now we come up with, if we divide by negative one half, it's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, correct? So it's negative two x plus two equals y. So our inverse of the function is negative two x plus two equals y. Let's try number five. First things first, replace f of x with a y. x plus one squared plus four. Now flip flop your x's and y's, so x equals y plus 1, that's squared, plus 4. Subtract the 4 to the other side. x minus 4 equals the quantity y plus 1, that quantity squared. How do you undo a square? You have to square root both sides. So we square root both sides to come up with the square root of x minus 4 equals y plus 1. How do you move the 1 to the other side? You subtract it. So it's going to be x minus 4, and x minus 4 is the only thing inside the square root. Minus 1 because I subtracted over equals y. So here is our inverse of this function. Let's try a couple more. Now we're asked to determine whether each pair of functions are inverse functions. So we have to do the exact same thing, but what we can do though is just apply the inverse on one function. So I'm going to move the g of x function away and I'm going to apply the inverse. I'm going to work my inverse here to see if it gives me this function. So let's try it. I'm going to change the f of x into a y. So it's going to be y equals 3 fourths x minus 6. What do we have to do? We have to flip flop the x's and y's. So it's going to be x equals now 3 fourths y minus 6. Solving for y, subtract or add the x over. So it's x plus 6 equals 3 fourths y. Now divide both sides by 3 fourths. We're dividing the whole thing over here by 3 fourths. So we flip and multiply so it's 4 thirds x plus 8 equals y. Now does this function look a lot like this guy. I hope so. It's just written backwards. This y is written as g of x. And so if I rewrite it and I put this stuff over here, it's g of x equals 4 thirds x plus 8. So are they inverse functions? Your answer is yes, they are. Let's try one more. Same thing with the f of x and the g of x function. I'm going to move the g of x function out of the way and apply the inverse to my f of x function. What do we do first? Change the f of x to a y. x squared flip flop the x's and y's. So x equals 4 y squared. Solving for y. First things first, we have to divide by 4. x divided by 4 equals y squared. How do you undo a square? You have to square root both sides. So we have the square root of x over the square root of 4, which equals y, and y then equals the square root of x stays the square root of x, but the square root of 4 is 2. So now we come up with this function. Is this function like this function? No, it's not because here we are multiplying, here we are dividing by 2. So these are not inverse functions. And that does it for section 6.2, inverse functions and relations. Good day.